Good morning, Internet. So I wanted to make a quick video today and introduce my Van Dessel Illuminator. I bought this bike as a frame, and I built it up recently. And so this bike gave me a bit of grief when I put it together. I want to kind of walk you through some of those problems I had and what I did to fix them or get around them in case you're like one of the three people in the world who's actually building up another one of these frames. They made this bike only for a couple of years uh, in 2014, and there's a number of reasons I suspect why, uh, but we'll get to those in, t in a minute. So, let's go ahead, we'll walk you through some of what this bike is, some of the problems I encountered, and some of the ways I resolved those. I do hope to share more videos on this bike in the future, which is why I'm taking the time to introduce it to you. So without further ado, let's work our way through this. The biggest problem I had when I put this frame together was with the crank set. I had originally planned to use a Shimano drivetrain, specifically uh, 105-50-800. I'm using the first gen or early generation 105 hydraulic levers, and I kind of wanted the drivetrain to match. But this bike has got this weird offset bottom bracket with an asymmetric chainstay. And because of that, the 105 crank and all the Shimano cranks I tried hit the chainstay and they're just shifted too far to the left and this has got a 68 millimeter bottom bracket shell so there wasn't really any room to play with that on the, the Shimano cranks. So what I ended up doing was using an SRAM X7 crank. This one had a Q factor of somewhere around 170 and I think it was a 48 millimeter chain line. I was able to put it in and shift it a little bit either way to to allow it to fit and clear the chainstays appropriately. It actually works really well. I'm using a press fit 30 bottom bracket. Uh, I, I tried doing something fancy with a thread in uh, press fit conversion. But I ended up galling the bottom bracket, so that didn't work out. Uh, but to get this to fit, I had to go with a press fit bottom bracket and I had to use an SRAM crank. And the nice thing about SRAM is they publish their dimensions. So I was able to look at the various crank offerings that they have and find one that would work. So that was the big problem, uh, kind of the expensive problem. The second hurdle I encountered was with the front derailleur cable guide. Spike has this weird arrangement where it only uses the drive side cable guide. So typically that one would be used for the rear derailleur. So because of this, it's got this really weird cable line and I didn't have a bottom bracket cable guide that came with the frame. So what I ended up doing was making my own. I 3D printed this one and it's worked out well so far. Um, if you have one of these bikes and you need a bottom bracket cable guide, I'm gonna put a link down in the description to the Thingiverse page where I share this so you can download it and print it yourself. But getting this bottom bracket cable to fit and align uh, was a bit of a hurdle. I could not find an off-the-shelf bottom bracket cable guide that would work. The third thing I ran into was fitment of the seat post. This is advertised as being a 27.2, but when I measured it out, it's actually a 27.4. I wasn't able to find a 27.4 seat post, so what I did is I took a 27.2 and I wrapped the lower portion in some thin aluminum tape until I got it out to 27.4. I then put it in and used a double bolt uh, seat post clamp to sort of crunk that down on it. It doesn't move, although it does click, so I may revisit that solution. The last hurdle I had to overcome was tensioning on the front derailleur cable. Van Dessel used a 6mm hole here for the cable adjuster, and like 95% of frame cable adjusters are 5mm. So I kind of hacked this together from a mountain bike brake cable adjuster and a piece from an old derailleur. This is not actually being used for tension. I'm only using it to hold the end of the cable and I'm using an inline cable tensioner to actually pull tension on the front derailleur. Something to keep an eye out if you get one of these frames is to try and find a solution for this front derailleur tensioning. And then the last thing, and this isn't really a hurdle, but this bike has this sort of sandblasted anodized finish and it's just a mess. Everything sticks to it. It's easily scratched. It's rough like a chalkboard. Um, I think it was probably a good idea on the drawing board, but in actuality, it's just, 
It's a messy, ugly finish. So that's unfortunate. I found that if I spray it with a little clear wax, I'm gonna wipe it down, it at least hides some of the, you know, the scuffs and scratches that it gets when I touch it. Uh, one of the things I'm just gonna have to get over and accept that it is what it is. Maybe hope it develops a patina. That's all I really had for this bike. Um, I just wanted to walk you through some of the things that trip me up when I put the frame together. So if you have a Van Dessel illuminator and you're kind of going through the same thing, maybe that'll help you when you choose parts, uh, at least keep you from getting in a bind. Hopefully you'll see some videos on this in the near future where I make some upgrades. You know, I like to swap out the shifters, and get it up to be a, an 11 speed. Uh, I want to play around with tires, and I may do some interesting things with the fork, specifically around bonded compression caps. So if you have one of these, or maybe you're just curious, keep an eye out, uh, subscribe, and YouTube will let you know when these videos come. So anyhow, that's all I'm gonna say today. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, at least maybe got something out of it. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching.